Welcome to Bath Talks with Jim Bruce. Well, welcome to another episode of Bath Talks. This show is not going to be a movie review show. Uh, there are plenty of those that are wonderful, very smart people talking about movies. Uh, I don't necessarily need to add my voice to that. However, I would like to talk about one movie today, and from time to time I will talk about movies. Um, today I'd like to talk about the movie Groundhog Day. Now, if you've heard enough about Groundhog Day, just pretend you're in Groundhog Day. Huh? Uh, I love the film Groundhog Day, and today what I wanted to talk about is the most important citizen of Punxsutawney based on the movie. I was thinking about that. I was thinking about who's the most important character in that movie that isn't our main character. Who is the most important character? By the way, let's give it up for Harold Ramis. What a great director, right? Made a fantastic film. That film I have watched so many times. I think I have watched that movie as many times as Phil went through Groundhog Day. I really like that movie. If you talk to my wife, she'll say that as well. I've watched it way too many times. But who's the most important character? Not counting Bill Murray, not counting Andy McDowell, not counting the hilarious Chris Elliott. Who is the most important character in that film who lives in Puxatawney? Well, you could debate a lot of things. You could say that maybe it's the mayor. You could say that maybe it was the groundhog. But I'll tell you who I think the most important character is. Because that's why you came, is to hear what I thought. I think the most important character in Puxatawney is the old man. The homeless old man. I think that the entire film hinges on that old man. Now, if you don't remember very well, you should go watch it again. When Phil Connors first gets to Puxatawney and he's about to do the Groundhog Report, uh, one of the first people he sees on his way to the festivities is an old homeless man. And uh, the old man holds out his hand. He's clearly very desperate. By the way, I don't know who that actor is, but that's an incredible characterization of desperation and alcoholism because you can tell that the old man kind of has the shakes. It's a very sad it's a very sad character, really. And uh, Phil Connors does this thing where he pats his you know, jacket looking for money. But, of course, he had no intention of giving him any money. And he just passes him by uh, and ignores him. Uh, the next day, he does the same thing. The first Groundhog Day, he pats, his, pats himself down and uh, ignores him, doesn't give him any money. The day I thought of doing this video talking about Groundhog Day, it happened that I was on my way to the AM PM to buy myself a soda, uh, Coke, a Diet Coke, uh, when I passed a homeless guy and I ignored him that day. And it occurred to me that every day is Groundhog Day for the homeless. Uh, it doesn't matter that it's a different day of the week. If you're a homeless person in America, oftentimes every single day is the same experience. It's the experience of other people looking at you with a mix of pity and I wish you weren't here. I wish I wasn't seeing you. I wish I wasn't exposed to your suffering. Sometimes people are crueler than that. Sometimes people just kind of avert their eyes, but it's the experience of being invisible every single day. So what Phil Connors was going through, that old man in that film was going through every day without it needing to be Groundhog Day. Every single day, dismissed, belittled, nothing. Human being, but nothing. Uh, I ended up buying that guy a sandwich, by the way, because that day I just couldn't bear being myself if I walked away from him. I just felt like I had to do something. And I don't think I changed anyone's life. I made myself feel better. So, in that movie, what happens is uh, Phil Connors goes through this transformative experience where he becomes a better person because he wants to be worthy of the love of Andy McDowell's character, uh, Rita. Uh, he wants to be somebody that she could love and that deserved to be loved by her. And really, when you think about what a light comedy it is, you couldn't find a deeper subject than that the desire to be worthy of love. That's not just a love story. That's a self-love story. Because there's two love stories there. There's the love, of course, boy and a girl. But there's also the learning to be the kind of person that you don't hate waking up to. Learning to be the kind of person that you can look in the mirror. And what is it that changes Phil? Well, 
I would argue that it's the old man more than any other thing in the movie because he learns to play the piano and that's very funny and that's very entertaining. He learns to speak French, he learns to ice sculpt, which is great. But what is it that teaches him to be a human being? All the other things are things you can practice. You can practice ice sculpting, you can practice basketball, you can practice any of those skills, but what you can't practice is decency. It's very hard to find the decency within you. That's something that has to be sparked by another human being. That's something that you cannot simply generate yourself. You need the interaction of another human being. And it isn't until Phil sees the old man as a person, buys him food, that he begins to be a good human being. But it isn't even that. It isn't until he accepts that the old man's death is beyond his power and that the old man's life was precious and we're all here for a short amount of time that he becomes a good person. Watch the film again and take note of what he calls the old man. He calls the old man father. I want to cry every time I see it. He starts to call the old man father. Now, I don't think that this is just a term of endearment. I think he really does see the old man as his father. And I want you to think about something. Every old man you see is, in a sense, your father or your brother. We're all brothers and sisters, fundamentally, whether you believe in God or not. We are all children on this ridiculous planet trying our best to get through a life that is sometimes very unpleasant. And the only thing that makes it worthwhile is you. And the only thing that makes it worthwhile is me. That's it. And to me, that's the true lesson of that movie. And it isn't until that moment that he breaks the cycle. I would also like to point out that the movie is fundamentally a Buddhist movie. I don't know if it was intended to be that. But think about Phil's journey. Phil doesn't become a real person until he transcends the wheel. Reincarnation is the idea that we come back in different lives. But being reincarnated, if you understand reincarnation a little deeper, isn't actually a good thing. You want to stop being reincarnated. You want to transcend the wheel. You want to learn the lesson. Groundhog Day doesn't end for Phil until he learns the lesson. Finally, I'd like to leave you with the message that I got from Groundhog Day. Every now and then, when you see somebody on the street, try not to dismiss them. Maybe see them. Hopefully, if I ever meet you in real life, I'll see you, and hopefully you'll see me. Maybe we won't love each other, but at the very least, maybe we can be kind to each other. All right, go watch the movie. I'm going to take a bath. Bath Talks is a Jim Bruce production. Bubbles provided by Amori Arce. If you enjoyed Bath Talks, click subscribe.